joint public engagement since the Queen's funeral and, of course, the ending of that official period of royal mourning. Well, the crowds cheered uh, the couple as they visited Dunfermline Abbey and saw the resting place of Robert the Bruce, no less. Then King Charles formally conferring city status on Dunfermline at an earlier ceremony. The royal couple being greeted by First Minister Nicola Sturgeon and Scottish Secretary Alistair Jack. Well, joining us now in the studio, our royal correspondent Cameron Walker. And Cameron, particularly poignant, I, I suppose, for uh, the king in that the, the city status was conferred, of course, as, as part of that Platinum Jubilee celebration. Yes, it's wonderful having this lasting legacy of Her Majesty the Queen. Dunfermline, one of eight cities which has been granted city status to kind of celebrate Her Majesty the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, 70 years of service, of course. And he formally conferred... Uh, uh, Dunfermline as a city and it's been dubbed actually by uh, the provost of Fife, who's kind of like a mayor figure for yeah, the yeah. area, that it's a very royalist city and he was greeted by crowds cheering uh, outside the uh, city chambers where he where he, he, he would, took part in that ceremony, as well as on his walk down to the Abbey, which has a long association with uh, royals, uh, including Robert the Bruce, of course, who, as you've just mentioned in your link there, is, is buried in the Abbey. Yeah, and uh, significance that, uh, again, it's something that's taking place north of the border in Scotland. Should we read anything into that? Perhaps, and I think the crowd's reaction to First Minister Nicholas Sturgeon arriving to greet His Majesty the King there was quite something. Oh, really? Many were booing. Ah, Many were booing. interesting. Granted, there were a few cheers, some yeah. from both sides here, but it, it was very clear that a lot of people were booing. Whether that was de deliberately staged is, uh, yeah. remains to be seen. But there was a lot of love and support for the king and the queen consort. And he does appear to be taking great comfort from uh, the, the warmth that he's getting from these crowds and the fact that he's um, managing to, to speak to people, to, to shake hands. And this sort of very personal link that he seems to be trying to establish with people. Yes, and the fact he spends a vast majority of, of his time in Scotland following the death of his mother and the national mourning period, as well as choosing this as his first public engagement following royal mourning with his wife, Queen Consort uh, Camilla, I think just shows perhaps the power the monarchy has in strengthening the union between England and Scotland. And we see them do two engagements here this afternoon, a bit later on this afternoon, they'll both be travelling to Edinburgh, where they're going to be hosting a reception at Holyrood House oh, for right. the uh, British Asian community within Scotland, celebrating their uh, service to Scotland in the NHS and arts, media, from all walks of life. So they're trying to meet as many real people, local people, as possible. Yeah, and again, reflection perhaps, of course, that uh, when we had uh, the, the period of mourning that the, the Queen's coffin was in um, Holyrood House for, for a time as well, that may obviously be quite difficult for him. Um, but looking at the, the other side of the, the royal coin, if you like, Harry and Meghan now back in the United States, we understand. We understand. What's the latest with all this um, froth, some people have described it as, <laughs> about the book and the documentary and so on? I mean, it must be causing the king some discomfort. I'm sure the royal households are trying best to ignore it, but you're right. So according to reports, we know that this book, this tell-all autobiography, which Prince Harry is expected to publish, is meant to be published by the end of the year. But roughly a week after Royal Morning ended, uh, there were reports thus to emerge that Prince Harry was desperately trying to make last-minute changes to this autobiography. Perhaps there's been some suggestion that following the outpouring of grief for Her Majesty the Queen, mm -hmm. for the public support of the King and Queen consorts, he wanted to perhaps tone down some of the alleged criticism he's going to be saying in this book. Because we, we saw, obviously, that both Harry and Meghan saw that firsthand in Windsor with those extraordinary pictures that we saw. They did, and they undertook a, a public engagement with the Prince and Princess mm. of Wales, the new Prince and Princess yeah. of Wales, greeting crowds. But it might be too late for Prince Harry the book, uh, if the publishers want it out in time for Christmas or out in time for American Thanksgiving, it may already be at the printers. We simply don't know. Right. So obviously um, commercial pressures, as they say, may, may actually dictate that. Um, and just looking ahead now, are we going to be seeing more of the King and the Queen Consort? Will there be a, a, a number of engagements now that we'll see them out and about? Yes. So today we uh, have confirmation that he will be hosting his first state visits to the United Kingdom at Buckingham Palace next month with 
with the president of South Africa and his wife. That will be at Buckingham Palace, the first, of course, he has conducted yes. as king. From my understanding from speaking to royal sources, this was actually in the early stages of planning before Her Majesty the Queen dies. But clearly now we've got a new king, so he mm. will be the one hosting rather than the late Majesty. Yeah. Cameron, as ever, thank you very much indeed for all your insight. and. Uh...